let's learn how to use the poll quiz tool. This is helpful when you're giving a presentation and you want to ask a question. Let's do a check for understanding based on colors. So what we're going to want to do is open the magic box, which is in the main toolbar. And then once that's open, find the poll quiz button, which is on the far right with the question mark and check mark. You can ask different kinds of questions like multiple choice, true, false. Let's go ahead and start with multiple choice. From here, we need to type in our question. So go ahead and do that. Now down below, we're gonna change our options. These are gonna be the answers that students can choose from. Notice that just above options, you can also add instructions if you would like to. In the options, you'll also see trash cans on the far right. These are for if you wanna delete any options. If you would like to add an additional option, click the add option button at the bottom of the options box. You can leave these unchecked, but if you check one of the options, this will make it the correct answer. Finally, let's change our countdown timer at the bottom to change how much time students have to answer this question. Let's set the minutes to zero so students have 30 seconds to answer. Then click the check mark on the bottom right to add this question to our question tab. You'll see the question pop up over here under the questions tab. Now click the plus button at the bottom of the questions tab to add a new question. This time we'll add a true false. Just like before, we'll add our question. You can change the options as well, but we'll leave them at true false and check true. Also, let's change our countdown timer again. Now you'll notice in the question tab that you can't see what the questions are. They're just sorted by code. If you wanna see what the question is, enable the show question slider at the bottom of the questions tab. If you ever want to go in and edit a question, simply click or touch that question. You'll see that it becomes highlighted. And then at the very top, in the middle, you'll see a pencil icon. That's the edit button. So if we click that or touch it, that's going to allow us to make changes to the question or to the options. Just don't forget to click the check mark at the bottom to save your changes. Next to the pencil is the copy button. This lets us duplicate a question. This is important because sometimes you wanna make this a little faster process. So we can actually go back now and edit this multiple choice and let's just change the question a little bit. And now that we've changed the question, we just need to change the correct answer. So we'll uncheck green, and then we're gonna check brown. Again, don't forget to click the check mark at the bottom to save it. It's important to note that you can save your questions to your Canvas. The way that you do this is you simply access file management from the main toolbar. Remember, file management is the folder icon in the main toolbar. All you have to do is save it like you normally save a canvas, and you'll see at the top next to the name of the canvas, the pull quiz icon. That means that the questions have been saved, and if I open this tomorrow or next week, those questions will still be there, as you can see here when we open pull quiz in the magic box. Now that we have all of our questions ready, we need to let our students join. They need to join through the teacher board portal. There's two ways you can access this. One is by clicking the back button 
in the top left part of pull quiz. And then you'll see a QR code there in the middle. If we touch that, it will show my board portal, which is myviewboard.com slash sharp. Likewise, we can access our board portal by going to our name in the top left corner. You can see again, myviewboard.com slash sharp. This here shows us how students log in. Again, they go to the URL with your board name, and then down here, they're gonna type in their name. When they click confirm, it'll take them to your board portal, and you'll see poll quiz there as an option. Now, when students click on poll quiz, it'll show this waiting for question window. They won't actually get the question until you as the teacher submit it to them. So let's go back to the teacher view to see how to submit a question to students. To start the quiz, go ahead and click the play button at the bottom of the poll quiz window, and you'll see here the question goes live and the timer starts. Let's look in on the student side where they can see the timer also counting down and they can choose their answer and submit it. When a student submits an answer, you'll see a responder count at the bottom showing you how many students have responded. When the timer runs out, this question will be closed and students can no longer answer. Now that this question is finished, let's check the class summary by clicking on the hamburger icon at the bottom of the window. In the summary, I can take a screen capture by clicking the expand button at the very top of the summary, which will expand the result, allowing me to click the camera icon, which is the screen capture in the top right. Here's my notification that the results have been captured. Now we can close this and get ready for our next question. But if we don't want to do each question individually or manually, there is a way to tell poll quiz to automatically advance to the next question. Just find the automatically start the next question slider at the bottom of the question tab. Now when we start this question, it will go just like normal. Here's the countdown. Again, let's switch over here to the student view. They can choose their response. And of course they can see the timer counting down as well. However, the difference this time is that when the timer reaches zero, the question will auto advance and the teacher doesn't have to do it manually. You can see there that the question auto advanced on its own and on the student side, when the countdown hits zero, this is what they see. And it automatically advanced to the next question, allowing them to select their next answer and submit their response. Now, sometimes you might want to stop a question manually before the timer runs out. Simply click the stop button at the bottom of the poll quiz window to stop the question. This will prevent students from answering. You can also save all the individual results by clicking the CSV file icon. This allows you to save the results to your local storage or to your cloud. Once you select a folder, you'll be asked to give the file a name. Again, it is a CSV file, so it's kind of like a spreadsheet, which allows you to look at individual student results. Here we can see that screenshot from earlier that I took of the class summary. It's just an image and saves as part of your presentation. If you teach multiple classes and you wanna do this poll quiz again, you need to reset the answer. So make sure you save those individual student responses first. And then at the bottom of the questions tab window, you'll see a check mark with an X icon. If you click or touch this, it will warn you, hey, do you wanna reset all of your questions? You say yes. And now your poll quiz is totally brand new and ready for your next class.